Hey guys, so welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to discuss how the ISO is working on the R7, which I'm actually recording this video with the R7 also, so you'll be able to see how the video quality is if you're doing the talking head thing here or if you're recording something in the field. Uh, so far, the recordings look good to me that I've recorded in the field. Let's talk about ISO first and exposure and light. Um, a lot of people talk about uh, bad low light exposure and stuff, but a lot of times the, the, you can push your ISO. It depends on if you can still get your exposure triangle correctly. I've had images that is 25,600 of owls in the winter, and they're very usable shots. You're always going to get noise, especially the larger, the megapixel camera. So the R5, it looks sitting right here. When I first got it, I was a little upset. Uh, I thought I was having too much noise in it. But that was due to the larger megapixel size coming from the 5D4 to the R5. And I'm jumping 10 megapixels around there, I think. The other issue was uh, Canon and Lightroom don't play well together. And if you put it in DPP, the Canon software, you'll notice that you don't have as much noise as you do when you go to Adobe Camera Raw or you go right to Lightroom. So that's why I and some other people, we use DxO Pure Raw. But right now, they don't have the DxO Pure Raw profile for the R7. So we're, I'm stuck back to using Topaz. So not a big deal. Topaz is great software, but I tend to run it after the fact, but I may start running it before the fact. Like I was saying before, high ISO is not bad. Uh, different types of light are going to work with higher ISO. If you have like golden hour or uh, maybe not so much blue hour, or you've got a full cast sky, but you're in the shadows of trees and things like that, you still have good yellow light bouncing or white light bouncing off uh, areas and stuff. If you have like, I've got some images here we'll show you in a second, where yesterday, the mornings of here, the last few days have been completely cloud covered. So it's a, it's a gray light. There's no yellow light whatsoever. So your exposure as you push it is worse in those gray light conditions when you have more, you have some type of yellow light somewhere within the, your sky. Even though that light's not hitting your subject, you still have that type of light bouncing around off everything. And one of the big things about uh, pushing your ISO is if you're going to push your ISO to the extremes, you're talking getting up in those 10s to 25s or 32s. Good Lord, if you have to go there, but there's times you have to. If you push it that far, you want to make sure you got your exposure right. You're not going to push it anymore when you go to your editing programs because you're just going to introduce more noise once you start raising that exposure. To show you what I'm talking about with that good light and gray light, um, you can have the same exact, almost exact settings in the same ISO, and you can have a different experience with the light and how your subject looks and what the noise looks like. And an example is these two images. So in the left image, we both have, they're both 4,000 on the ISO. And what you'll see is the left looks grainier than the right. But if you'll look, at all this little grain, these grain dots are the same size in both images. But seeing that I had more of a yellow light, because this picture was taken later in the afternoon when the clouds dissipated and the light was bouncing across, and this, this is in shadow, this image here. Let me turn that off and show you just that, the good image, or the, the better image, I should say, in this. The light, this is actually in shadow. This whole bird, you can see if you look real closely, this is he's kind of grayer because it's shadow. The lights over here bouncing everywhere, but it's not directly on my subject. And then in 26, it's a completely gray sky. As you'll notice, everything is more gray. It's almost identical settings. They're both of the same ISO. But when you compare the two, you'll notice this image on the right looks a lot better. Of course, the bird's a little bigger in the frame, but if you look at eyeball to eyeball head frame, you'll notice that it looks like the ISO or the is better. You have better, like I had better a little bit. It's because of we have a gray versus a yellow. Is that color science? Is that actually, but that's just my experience with using this stuff. This is what I noticed. Another example is with 
the R5, like I was talking, I, I wasn't real happy with the uh, with the ISO or the noise. I thought I had too much noise with the with the R5, but that was due to the mirrorless of CR3 files not playing well with Lightroom and Canon. By talking about DxO Pure Raw, how I could recover an image where I thought I had too much noise. Now this is an R5 file, what I'm showing you here. With the Canon and Adobe not playing well, this is what a 30, 25,000 ISO image looks like right here. Using D, but I put it in DPP, it looks cleaner. I don't see as much noise. And so I'll show you what it looks like after you run it through DxO Pure Raw. I, I don't like Topaz as much as my image. I like D, DxO better because it does less sharpening. Topaz to me sometimes, and I, you can turn that sharpening off, but I, sometimes I still get some artifacts I don't like in it. Now it's not, it's still phenomenal software, but I just like the DxO better. So just by running it through DxO, I don't have any sharpening. You can turn the sharpening and the global profile connection, you can turn those off. You can just have it just do the touch and noise and getting the correct camera profile and color and light for your lens and your camera. And this is the result. Same picture, I just ran it through DxO Pure Raw. And I'll A, B these together or X, Y them. And you'll see the difference in the two. It did not get rid of all the noise but it got rid of a, a big chunk of it. So the thing about Topaz, it, it will get rid of all that noise out of the sky and stuff like that or in your bouquet. Um, I don't always want all the noise gone. Sometimes I like a little bit of noise and it, sometimes I'll introduce noise back into stuff just to make it look a little better. But you can see real quickly with how the colors and everything looks better. And this, this looks almost like DBP, the Canon software when you put it in there. All right, a little long-winded, but I just wanted to get that out there that uh, the Canon and Lightroom don't play well together. And if you go test it yourself, go go put the Canon software on there, look at your image, and then put it in Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw and look at your image, and you'll see there's a lot more noise. So let's get into these pictures. Okay, let's get our first image pulled up. This is an image, and it is a... A little dark. Uh, I underexposed this image quite a bit on purpose. Um, the reason is I wanted these nice dark bokeh balls and I could come in and brush this bird a little bit to bring it back in the, in the, the color. I love this. This is a Danny Woodpecker feeding. All these images will be a Danny Woodpecker feeding these babies. They just fledged yesterday, so they're gone now. And this guy has some nasty looking buggies feeding them, but I bet the kids loved it. So this is at 12,000, or say 1,250 at the R7. And let's go compare that to the R5. And it is image 39. We'll AB these next to each other. And there is the R5 and the R7. The R7's with the, with the bug. It's going to be my side of the left screen. It should be on your right side. But it's just so on your left side. I'm using a screen capture here. So the left image is always going to be the R7. The right image is going to be the R5 when I pull them up. So what you'll notice in here, this noise is almost identical. It's a little, it's a touch tighter on the noise on the R7 versus the R5, but that's about it. But both images, at, which you'd expect at 1,250, should look good. Um... When you've got, you know, we've got just the chick in the pictures, it was hitting back here more. It was seeing an eye in here instead of this bird. This, this, this bird is really camouflaged because this is not really, it's a, not, I'm not real close to it. It's pretty small in the frame. All right, let's, that's 1,250. Again, pretty close. R7 looks good. Let's jump to 1,600. And I don't have an R5 picture, but we do have the, uh, the R7 picture. So here's R7 at 1600, which we expect it ought to be clean. But again, you notice there's still, it's, it's just a Canon uh, Lightroom. And so as we compare these R5 images, you'll see that this noise is really close to the R5. So if you're able to work with the R5 images, you're better. Now the R6 is, you know, less megapixels. So there's less information per, you know, for the size of the screen. So you won't see as much noise on a lower megapixel. But this, this 32 
That'd be like 80 or 90 megapixel camera if you had it. So you can imagine the noise that's in that size. So, so far it's looking pretty good to me. So anyway, that's 1600. Let's move on up to 2000. Okay, let's jump to 2500. I don't have an ISO 2000 for the R7. There's no point looking at the R5 because we're really concerned about the R7 and its low light performance. So let's jump to 2500 ISO. And that is this image, which again, we expect at 2500 everything to look good. A little bit of motion blur in this bird's head, but if you see these woodpeckers take off a tree, even at 30 frames a second, I can only get maybe one, two as they're flying out of there. They just bang out of there fast. But again, as we look over here, it's always easy to see the noise over here. But what I want to note to you, I don't really care myself what's in the bouquet. I'm not as concerned about what's the noise out here. I'm more concerned about what does the noise look like in the eye, the most important part to me of an animal, and what does it look like in the subject here, and it doesn't look bad at all. You can see noise here, but again, once we run it through Topaz or we put it through uh, DxO or just do it natively in the application of, of Lightroom, you can reduce the noise some there. It's negligible. So right now, this this is very, very clean to me because we're, we're zoomed in 100% on this, so we're really pixel peeping here. When you're not pixel peeping, you don't see the noise. You pixel peep, you'll see a little bit of the noise. And let's compare it to the R5 image of the same one. So that's image 24. It's A, B, these two. So here we go. These don't line up well, but watch you'll notice again. Now, again, this little bugger over here, it, I can see it's hitting right here. It missed, but... I'm not as I'm concerned about the bird, but even if it's a little out of focus, it's not bad. Topaz and DxO will actually bring this bird back at that focus back a little bit better because it's just barely off, but it's just enough to aggravate you. But you'll want to look once again, these grains to me look really, really close. I, what I'm noticing is the grain and the noise in the R7 is a little more smoother and uniform. And I, I sometimes we get the higher ISO, I'll see banding in the R5 that I don't see in the R7. So that's really cool. Um, again, the, at 2500, image is extremely useful. I, it's still good. I, I don't really see much variance in the two. Now let's move up to 3200 ISO. That's what most people say. I've talked to people that had the 7D. I never had the 7D. I went for the 5Ds, what I, I ran most of the time. And they always said I, they didn't go past 32. They could push it to 64, but 32 is really the way they wanted to stop. So let's look at that. So we're going to pull up the R7 image first. So this is 3200 ISO. Looks really good to me. Uh, the little guy's a little out of focus. He's in focus. Again, the eyes, I don't see noise in it. The feather detail, I don't really see much noise. If you really, again, we're pixel peeping really tight because we're at 100% on this. And you see a little bit in here, but again, nothing that our denoise software, uh, color correction software won't get rid of. Let's compare that to the uh, R5. So now we're comparing it to the R5. And what you'll notice again is ISO looks really, really close. And so let's look at our bird again. This hit a little closer than this one hit. It's, this is still a little out of focus. But we're really looking at the noise, and I don't see a ton of noise in the bird, a little bit in the beak, nothing more than I'm seeing here. It may be a touch more noise on the R7 than the R5, but again, they're both good. Let's move on up to 4,000. ISO. So now we're getting to the range. Most people say, hey, you don't want to go there. So let's look at the R7 image first. This is a 4000. Uh, when we're out here, this looks beautiful when it's full image. When we start to pixel peeping in here at 1000, uh, we see noise, but but it's not bad at all. The noise looks good. Eye looks good. In the blacks, I'm not seeing much noise. A little bit in the grays, we're seeing a little bit of noise, but at 4,000 ISO, I think that's pretty good. The, the foot detail looks good, tail looks good, bark looks good. So let's compare it to the R5 now. And it's image 45. Let's A, B the two. Now this one is both good light. So this is a good comparison between the two. And as we jump in and right here, so the light was a little bit better when I shot this with the R5 versus the R7. 
as you can see, if you're looking at the bouquet, you can see how more, much more gold we have here and more purple we have in here. And you'll even see the light bounce a little bit better. They go both at 4,000 ISO. We jump in and it gives you again that illusion that we have less noise in the R5, but we don't. If we look up in here, we start getting out in this stuff, you'll start to see your grain is pretty close. There's a touch less in the R5, but not much. It's still fairly, both of them are pretty. I'm trying to find a color that's comparable, but the problem is they're not. Right in here, you can kind of see it. The grain's about the same. It, it, like I said, it's just a little bit better in the R5 than the R7, but only a touch. And when you get in here, if you're looking at this, um, of course, this one, I nailed it, which is hard. When, when they're sticking farther out, it would start to grab the eye. When they were closer to the tree, it was getting lost in all this other stuff. Both cameras, R5 and the R7. And, uh, but if you look at it, they both have about, and we don't really, yeah, we have it right here. So we can compare these feathers to these in here. And you're seeing both of them have a little bit of noise in the grayish part of the feather. It's hard to see the back of his head because of the tips of his hair. And, uh, you know, this one has a little more wispier feather detail. I wish I would, yeah, right here. Here we go. So you can see this feather detail, this feather detail. They look about the same. And at 4,000 ISO, the R5 and the R7 are looking pretty close to the same. I'm, I'm feeling good already. Let's jump up to 5,000 ISO. Like I'm on a game show here. Okay, 42. Yes, it's 5,000 ISO. Let's look at it. So this is the R7 image. And we're starting to see it looks a little grainy, but we'll look at the R5 and see, is it really grainy? So at five, again, I'm not quite hitting this little guy as good. It's still, it, every time this guy was close in this hole, both cameras would hit right here. It would see this little black, I don't know why. I kept thinking this is an animal. It kept missing this little guy. Uh, if they stuck their heads a little more over here to the left of that tree, boom, it would grab it. And sometimes they would grab it here, but they kind of had to stick their head a little more out of that hole. But when they were even with this tree bark, it was a nightmare. Let's go grab the other one. So image 27, we'll compare it to the R5 again. A, B, it. All right. So the R5 is on the right. And what you'll see is I nailed that little guy in the hole there. So again, in focus. So it's not always the, the, the ISO and the noise. It's a matter of do you get your focus and do you got your shutter and all that other stuff going. And you'll even see the bark looks a little more in focus because it was hitting up here a little farther back because it's not too far because I'm shooting 2.8. So it's pretty shallow field. I should have been finer. But let's go out here and look at the noise. And what we're seeing again, at least to me, is we're getting a touch more separation in the noise but they're both really still comparable if you look up here. So this on the left again, R7, this is the R5. The R5 is just a touch hair, less noise, but it's not much. You can see it in here, not that much noise difference. What we're seeing is we got an image in focus and image is not in focus. You can see a little bit of that difference in the noise, but again, it's another focus problem right in here because you can see this, is, this one's more in focus than this image. But, Mainly just looking at the grain, because it's really what we're concerned about, how much noise we have. So let's go bump her up. Let's go to 6,400. And what we'll start seeing here is when you have good light and you're pushing your ISO versus when you have bad light when you're pushing your ISO. And people talk about low light. Yeah, it's low light both ways, but what kind of low light do you have? And what's bouncing and stuff or model light? So here is the image. This is the R7. Here we go. Let's make sure this is 6400. It is. Got some motion blur because I'm only shooting at 1600 and this bird's taken off. So we got a little motion blur on the eye and stuff. The tail's clean because that's, that's weird. The tail's not moving, but everything else is. So we look down here, a little bit of noise. Let's go again. Let's compare this to the R5. And this should be 28. Compare it. And we get in here, and if you look at this noise, and they're pretty close again. You're starting to see a little bit of uh, separation. Things aren't in focus. It leads your eye to think you're seeing stuff you're not. 
but the number of dots in here. Now we're starting to see the banding I was talking about on the R5. If you look right here, you'll see a crosshatch pattern appearing, and you don't see it in the R7, but you're seeing it in the R5. I really didn't pixel peep at this getting past 6400 much, I, but and maybe I just didn't notice it, but I, it's interesting to see this banding on the R5. But again, uh, this noise is almost the same in the two. Um, both look really good still. They're both extremely, at 6400, both images to me are extremely usable. Let's jump up to, I'm going to skip 8000 because I don't have an R7 image. Let's look at a 10,000 ISO image. So here's the range at 10,000 that I, I, I said in my first video that if I could get 10,000 usable ISO comparable to my R5, I was going to be extremely happy. So let's see if I'm going to be happy. Let's go find it's image 7. Yep, that's 10,000 ISO. So image 7 is right here. Let's zoom out. So it full, you know, as it, you know, as it is, looks good to me. Looks great. Zoom in on the little guy. Again, we're pixel peeping. So now we're starting to see a little bit of grain in the blacks. Not much. We're seeing more in the grays of the feather. Feather detail looks pretty good, but you can see how now the grain's starting to affect it just a little bit at 10,000 ISO. But we'd expect that. Really expect it. But if you're out here and you're cleaning up with your software, it should clean this image up really well. It should get this noise out of here sharpen it up again it hit the, this bird better on the eye it picked that one and this guy's just a touch this way f8 still was the compression got me so let's go compare this to a b and see what we get so both back out here well, let's zoom in guess what guys that looks really close i can see the grain is tighter it's a little more sparse here um, but again, I'm seeing the banding here. I don't know if you guys can see it in the video, but I'm seeing banding in this R5. Um, but when I look at these eyes and these birds and the grain and the beaks, of course, this is, these are bigger than this one. It's pretty close. It, it, it's, I'm, not, I'm seeing a little bit of separation of the R5 that I think it'll clean up a little bit better, but not by much. And uh, yeah, looking down here in the bark. You know, it's again, the light was, again, the light was a little better on the R7 picture than was the R5 picture. So again, this should look a little better. It should give you the illusion that you have better um, ISO. But I'm trying to look at the grays because that's usually where you see your grain a lot more than you'll see elsewhere because it's easier to see white on the, the gray and the black. Blacks have a little more grain, but and over here they have the same thing. So I'm seeing pretty close to... The same amount of noise in both pictures. Again, R5 is touch better. It's not bad. So let's go up to 12,500. So now we're getting into the stupid range. And so let's see what we got. So we want to look at image 9 to see what we've got as far as low light. So we are at 12,500. When we are at full screen, we can actually find, you know, we're starting now. We can see a little bit of the noise at this, you know, at the, the 2 by 3 uh, size standard of the camera we zoom in yeah we're starting to see the noise but again i'm looking at this and i'm going dxo or even topaz is going to clean that right up we just looked at a 20 was it 25,000? we we'll go back and look at it again when we get done here uh what the dxo processed the r5 at uh so it doesn't look bad to me i've still got my catch lights everything you know it's not real big in the frame that's a we're, we're jumping way in here um, everything's good. So now let's go say, well, how did the R5 do? So let's look at image 31. Okay, let's, and that should be my, let me double check that. I I put an extra picture in here, it threw things off. So yeah, that's 12,800. So I need 9 and 31. Excuse me for jumping around, guys, because we're, um, this is, None of this is scripted. I just have the numbers written down with the two comparisons, and I briefly looked at these. I just tried to find the same images, so or comparable images. And again, what we've got here is this was a partially clouded sky. This was a 
very little clouded sky in this image. So let's compare the two. So where's my little birdie? Where's my little woodpecker? So look here. Again, this is one where, again, I said, you know, when they this little guy got his off the edge of this tree, both autofocuses picked it up quick. And when they were back in the hole, it would touch here, and it looks like it hit right along in here instead of back on the bird. But, again, we're really looking for the noise. And you look at these two, and I about, other than I like the R7 a little bit better because the banding that I'm seeing in this one now, again, Said it 100 times, you're going to talk to me hearing it. Our Denoise software is going to clean this up pretty good. And uh, seeing that the R5 and this are matching pretty close to each other at 12,800, you're starting to see a touch separation um, on some images. But right now, I'm not seeing a ton of noise separation. You know, at 12,800, you should expect to see a lot of noise in these, and we do. And it's not, But it's not horrible noise. Well, let's get even more stupid. Let's get up to 16,000 ISO. And this is what it looks like when it's, you know, the 2x3. Doesn't look bad, but you can see the noise. It doesn't look much worse than the 12,800. We zoom in. Yes, we've got noise, but we still have feather detail. It's going to be a little harder for it to bring this beak back, you know, in here. And let's look at image 11. So this is the feeding him. And again, now we're seeing more noise in the eyes. The blacks, we're starting to see more, a little more noise in the blacks and the reds, and we're seeing a lot more in the gray. And we're starting to lose a little more of our detail in these claws. Uh, but I believe, again, with... So you've got details here in this the cap of the feathers. I think, it really, if we ran this through Topaz or dxo it would be i think this image could still be usable very usable maybe surprised and because i really don't have to push anything the exposure is pretty good so again i was talking earlier if you're going to push these higher make sure you get that exposure right if you, this was too dark and you know, just have to throw in the trash but i would still try to run this through the software and see what i got so now let's go compare that to the r5 at sixteen thousand. so this should be image 32 or 33 let's double check so it is 32. This image 11, I think is the one I like more, and 32. Let's compare these two. So again, pretty good light, a yellow light that is. This is more of a gray light over here. So let's get in here and look. So right off the bat, what do you guys think? I and me, yeah, the R5 grain is not as, oh, it's pretty close. You get in here, where's my birdie? Focus hit right along in here instead of here. I can tell by looking at it. So my birds ought to be close in the two. And of course this is bigger, but I see more fall apart, maybe because the focus is not as well on this bird, but this the focus is not really tight on this one. It's pretty good, but not as tight. Um, but if I picked these two images, of course, I'd pick the one that had a little more yellow light versus the one that had the gray light in it. And so, again, there's that banding. This is really crazy. I really didn't notice this banding before. I don't see it. I see maybe a little bit there, but I don't really see it in the R7 pictures. But yeah, so that's the at 16,000. So, again, guys, I would not expect to... I really didn't think I would get past 8,000 with this, but... Again, it, this this picture, I think I could run it through DxO or Topaz and get get this grain because I'm, I'm pixel peeping. I'm way in on this thing. I wouldn't need that crop. I would probably I may move it to the right a little bit, but just a touch, not much. It's really not much I can do. I should have framed this more with them on the right, but it is what it is. More like how this tree is sitting. So again. Uh, I don't know what you guys think. You know, I mean, leave me some comments and tell me what you think. Uh, you know, this is 16,000 ISO on this R7, and you're seeing the R5. And if anybody has the R5, you know what you can use, what you can get away with, and how you can recover pictures. So let's uh, let's really take this stupid train all the way up. Let's go up here to 20,000 ISO. All right, so I need image 13 and 14 from the R7. Let's look at the number image 13. There it is with 
That is 20,000 ISO. Good light, a good yellow light that is. Again, trees in the shadows. Completely covered. There's canopy, trees all around me. So I'm in the canopy. And this is 20,000 ISO. We pixel peep, we're going to start to see noise. We're, we, if we don't see noise at 20,000 ISO, I would be shocked. A little gray here. Um, but again, uh, you guys know how your denoise software works. It would clean this up quite well. You have to watch out with Topaz, uh, or if you're using the sharpening and DXO, that you don't make these get squiggly. This is where Topaz, you have to be really play with it when you have these fine feathers. You don't want it to make, because sometimes it'll do squiggly lines. And DXO will do something, too, if you're not doing the settings correctly. Uh, I mean, but these feather details on the head look good. Uh, baby, he's a little washed out, but uh, seems like I get the babies I kept getting washed out. You're seeing a lot of gray in the eye. Again, we got feather detail here. Zoom back out. So let's look at image 14. This is still the R7. Ah, clip that wing. Look at that. That's annoying. Of course, I'm getting bird butt, but capturing this guy coming off the tree was impossible. So again, we're at 20,000 ISO. And you guys tell me if you look at that image at that, and if you're going for social media, this image is usable, even as it sits. But if you threw it through your software, even better. Let's look at here. So, yep, here it is. You know, you're starting to see the wash as we're pixel peeping a little bit. This is the exposure's not great on him. The whites look good here. This guy's hauling butt, and I'm amazed that it captured this. What was I at? Well, it makes sense. I was at 8,000 on this guy. But that tells you how fast this bird is. When he's at 8,000... And you're still getting with image stabilization on the 7200 because that's the lens I was using, image stabilization on R7, and you're still getting a touch of motion blur here. But look how it stopped this, even this feather here at 8,000. Pretty cool. Um, but again, we should expect grain, right? Especially in these grays and the blacks. But I think, I, I think with our software, this will be a social media post. Now, I'm not going to, again, there's a difference between social media posts. Facebook, Instagram, sharing things like that for YouTube videos that are you using. Uh, I could use this for a thumbnail if I wanted to, but it's really not framed right. But for print, it's not going to work. So you got to remember there's a difference in print and there's a difference in doing your for your uh, social media post. So, yeah, that is 20,000 ISO. Now let's go compare it to the R5. And here we go. So we got. So what do you think, guys? Again, there's that banding I'm seeing. Maybe I'm just seeing patterns, but I, I see a line here. I see lines going up and down. You can really see it when you get these bokeh balls. I get over here and these bokeh balls, it's pretty uniform, the pixels. Um, if I'm looking at this sky, looking at the noise, it's a little tighter to me on the R7. I'm trying to find a spot that's dark because you know these colors don't match. So in here, so the noise, you can see it here in this black versus down in here and up in here. You can see the noise is more uniform and tighter than it is over here. It's a little less in this. So you're starting to see that separation now between the full frame and the crop sensor. But again, 32 versus 45, let me get my numbers wrong. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, they're still not that far off to me. They're off, but they're not that far off. I'll look at these two birds. Um, I think the blacks are a little bit tighter over here, but again, this is a different, the light's a little different. This is a little bit more yellow than light than I had here. All right, let's go on up to 25,600. Let's get crazy. We're getting to the range that I would never think I would use with the R5 full frame. Yes, I have an owl picture that I love. It's a it's a short-eared owl in the snow, but since it was in the snow, it made it easy because the noise doesn't show up in white as much. All right, so 25,600, we're going to go image 15. Where are you at? Count to 15. There we go. Let's look at it. Image 15. This is 25,600 in pretty good light back in the shadows in the, in the woods. You know, you got canopy over it. You guys know what this is like. And you're, so you can see the noise. But again, you clean this up, use this at 2 3 and you know, 2 3 in your Instagram or whatever, this would clean up and look great. So go pixel peep. 
So as we're pixel peeping here at 25,600, yeah, we got noise. <laughs> Better have noise. And you'll see it in here, and it's pretty uniform. Again, this is the R7 crop sensor, 25,600. We got noise, but I guarantee you, just for funnies, let me come in here. And let's go here and look at that. Just a little bit of noise reduction there. And we are back in the game of, to me. Look at that. It looks clean. Now, this using the noise reduction straight here from Lightroom, it's smooth because like these feathers, let me just zoom this, zero this back out. You see a little bit of feather detail here, and you bring this luminance up just a touch. And you see you lose a little bit of detail here. But the Topaz and the DXO, they handle this better than if I'm just running my own sliders because I'm trying to, you know, I can run things around and try to, you know, get it where I want it. But just that little bit, I mean, that eye, look at the eye. It's, it's looking really good. Still got noise out here. Slam it all the way over for giggles. <laughs> Looks horrible. <laughs> Smoothed it out. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of amazed, to be honest with you. Um, that that I'm still looking at this image going, well, I could use this for social media. I'm really surprised. Um, just a little bit there. Still noisy, but... Yeah, I mean... You, it's kind of scary to me that... 25,000 on a crop sensor, I could do something with this picture. I mean, it's it's not, you're not going to go print this picture, uh, but it's it's usable. So let's go look at the R5 now. We need to reset this picture real quick. Hang on. Okay, now it's reset. So it's zeroed out. So just so you know, I haven't done anything with these images. I hit reset. You know what that does. Brings everything back. There's no masks, no nothing. These images are all just straight raw. All right, let's AB them. So... This had a little more yellow light because I, I know by looking at these pictures when I took them and what the bouquets and stuff were looking like. But so let's get in here and let's start pixel peeping. 25,600. There's that banding again that I'm seeing with my eye. Let's get out here and look at these pixel dots. They're pretty close to me. I think in the R5, I think it's winning by a touch. But if you look at that that noise density, they're right there. I mean, it kind of makes sense seeing that this would be an 80, 90 megapixel if it was full frame around there. I don't know what the math is exactly. I've heard people say that, and it sounds good to me. Um, could be more. Could be 100. There's a math to do with those, what they, the crop. 1.6 crop. You can do the math, reverse it. And... Uh, and this other one's 45. So you would expect to see more noise over here than you're seeing over here in the R5, in, in, in theory, right? Because 89 versus 45, you should see more in the 89 versus the 45. That's why you don't do wildlife with the 100 megapixel cameras, plus they're too slow, uh, because you have too much noise. You can crop in like crazy, but you have too much noise. Again, I think the blacks are pretty comparable looking at the eye. This is the black part of the eye. They're pretty close. I, I think the R5, looking at the bark, it's kind of hard to say because there's more contrast than this one on the right and the focus points are different. This focus here is hitting in here on this picture. This focus point's hitting more back, back farther out. Again, yeah, the contrast, and this looks a little better with the noise on the R5. This is where you start to see it fall apart. I think the contrast and the noise, because one of the things you lose with noise is your contrast. All right, let's get to the last guy in the room here at 32,000 ISO. Would you use 32,000 on a crop sensor? Let's go look. So let's get this AB off. Let's look at image 18. Yep, 32,000 ISO, you see it here. 6,400, you know, I had to really crank the, the aperture up, 6,400 on shutter speed, F11, to get this, you know, to be able to push that ISO up that high. 
Again, we're looking at this 32,000 R7. It's pure raw. There's nothing. Let's hit develop and hit uh, reset. Just so you know, there's, there's, I've done nothing to these pictures. Um, and if you look at the file name, it's .cr3. You'll know if you run it through DXO, it'll have a dash. And if you run it through Topaz, you'll get the TIFF for the DNG. You won't have this CR3 at the end of it. So as we zoom in, we pixel peep. And we're, this is, again, this is the R7. You'll see right here, R7. Canon EOS R7. It's noisy, but would you expect to see that at 32,500? And again, you know, you're getting sick of me hearing it. Lightroom and Canon don't play well together. So let's compare this to the R5. So we need image 35. So again, same thing. Um, really good yellow, not a whole lot of clouds, the sun bouncing. And then over here, a little more clouds, but we also have a fire out here. So we've got a little a lot more haze in the sky. So we're getting more gray sky versus that. Now to me, I can, 32,000, I can see the banding on that R5 like crazy. Look at that. I can see that crosshatch now. Look at the birds. Didn't really miss the focus again on this guy. I mean, it's, it's there. It's close. But um, again, he stuck his head out. It got a little sharper. Um, Noise-wise, to me, the banding drives me nuts. So I almost feel like even though there's a little more, there's more noise density over here by a little bit, I'd almost say the R7 wins. Now, your mileage may vary. We're seeing the contrast, though, to me. Again, it's kind of hard to say because, you know, this is the ex exposure. Even though we've got 3,200, the exposure is a little different on these two because of the type of light that's bouncing. Got yellow light bouncing around off the ground on the trees and other, over here, and this light's more white that's bouncing. So it kind of gives that contrast a little more. And you can see this is, this is overexposed like crazy right here. So I didn't really get my exposure. Well, I really overexposed because I was really exposing for this bird, and I, I blew this out. But again, I'm 32,000. I wasn't that concerned about my exposure. But I think the contrast looks a little better on the R5. But it, again, I think it's more the light and the exposure than the ISO, the noise stuff. And we're not really, we're not as looking as IQ as much, but I'm happy. I mean, good Lord, look at the size that this guy is in the frame. Not very big, right? We get in here, there's still feather detail. And I think recoverable feather detail. Let's just, for funnies, let's just uh, take this off and let's just put it through Topaz. Why not? So edit in, denoise the eye. Let's see what we get. Edit that. We've done, we've done no, I've done, this is just straight raw, throw it in denoise, see what we get. There we go. So let's tell it to auto select what it wants. Boom, boom, boom. Here we go. It says it wants severe noise. I had picked it right. Look at that. Doom, 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 doom. Let's reveal him, reveal him, reveal him. Look at that. I'm kind of, I think it's too much. Um, this is where it didn't do bad, but it, it, see how it's just kind of getting this fringing. And you can adjust this stuff. We can take, uh, let's put it on low light, see what it does. I like doing the reveal. I got to have that thing. So it says it's updated. So we didn't do as much as I wanted to do there. Let's uh, um, just clear it. Look at the eye. I mean, that eye is coming back. I still, you know, not, it's not bad. It's a lot better here. Let's go back to the severe noise, let it update. And let's just go ahead and apply it and see what it looks like when we get back in Lightroom, look at it full thing. Um, it's the power of the M1. 18, 19, 18 is the original. No, 18 is the edit. So there's the original here. 089. And that is what Topaz did. So let's compare the two. 18, 19. A, B, the two. A little too much for me, but I don't know. Again, we're at 32,000 ISO, folks. We're not at... 3200 ISO. We're cleaning it up. So it's, yeah, social media useful. <laughs> it's not a perfect image either, but um, yeah, I and mean, that's the, what Topaz is going to do to the image. That's 32,000 ISO. I've heard a couple people talk about, you know, the high ISO versus R6. 
and some other cameras, you know, maybe the 5D or stuff, but you got to remember the megapixel is this camera. So like I showed you the comparisons with the R5. So let me go back and show you that R5 again. So that's the DxO process in the software. The reason I like the DxO is um, it doesn't do a, it doesn't do a ton. It really gets rid of the noise that it sees. That it really does what's inherent with the I'm closer with the DPP, the digital, the Canon software. It's pretty close to that. It just whatever Lightroom's doing, it's just horrible. Um, so that's pure raw. At this is twenty thousand ISO on the R5. So you've seen. The R7 to me and the R5 are pretty close. The R5 is winning out just by a touch, but it's just by a touch. And that's just the images I captured and I just showed you. Watch it back, which if you want to. Um, I, I'm not going to bother with making the, the raw files available. But, but yeah, you can look right here. This is the R5, the difference that the DxO Pure Raw does. And I, I just like that it, you know, it's, it doesn't really get crazy in here. Um, and it's pretty easy as a batch process. And you can tell it to sharpen, which I didn't do. And you can tell it to uh, do a couple other things that I, I tell it not to do. I just have it do basically do the touch of cleanup of the noise, get the camera profile correct that it should see, that it expects to see the Canon profile, and it loads it right in there. So the color profiles. Um, no editing has been done to these. They're just, again, they're pure. Look at 35. Take this off. Show you. There's... Not a thing has been done to this image. That's the wrong one. There's 35. So I've done nothing to this one. Here it is, guys. Um, I don't know. Tell me what you think. I think the uh, low light's pretty good with this camera. Um, it's all about expectations. It's all about what kind of light do you have when you're pushing your ISO. Oh, uh, sorry, let me, I've got a couple other pictures I can show you real quick. So this is the R7, uh, a fox that's along one of the trails I found this morning. He's got something, he's got a vole or something in his mouth. Uh, 3200, the sky today was completely gray. There was no, it was, I mean, it was gray, gray. The ceiling was extremely low. It was spitting rain. So it was the worst light conditions you're going to get. And this was, um, does this have the time? It doesn't. I think this was about five o'clock in the morning, Alaska time, um, which still pretty early, but you know, we've got light, but, but again, it's completely gray. I, I may put an image here. I took on my phone what the sky looked like. There's this gray. It's just, everything's gray. Uh, the reason I'm saying that, that's the worst light you're going to be in. And this is 3,200, which you expect to see 800, uh, on the shutter, 28 ISO, um, 122 millimeters, whatever that effect of focal length, one times six. And this guy, just get here, tile. So this is a really pixel peep. It, it's pretty bad. I'm at 200. You'll never be at 200. But uh, yeah, uh, 3200. It looks good. I love, I love finding the foxes. Um, horrible lighting conditions again. And there he is. He's just, the grass is so wet. He's running through it and they're still losing that top coat. But uh you can see the noise in here at 3200. Um, but yeah, very, very cleanable image. That long, I said, as long as the eyes look good to me and a lot of the detail looks good, a um, little bit of ha a halo here in this because of the noise, but not too bad. But today was probably the worst light I'm going to see besides being dark, uh, just super, super gray. And that's that's what what it turned out. So guys, there it is. That is the ISO performance. I'll probably do some more um, with this. I may do another ISO performance, but it'll probably be part of another video. Um, tell me what you think of the ISO, because uh, like I said, I'm comparing it right to my R5. I'm recording right now at the R7, so you can see what the video quality looks like. I think it's great. How long I've been talking here to this camera? says I've been talking to this for an hour, which I've got to edit down all the parts to it. So right there, it tells you it does go past the 30 minute mark that this would stop on. So it's still recording. And uh, yeah, I had to I had to start this again if I was using this one or I'd use the Atomos to record too. And uh, there it is, guys. Uh, want more to say? Um, leave me a message. Tell me what you think. I think the next video is going to be, I've got the, 
I went and rented the Tamron because a lot of people were asking about the Sigma and the Tamron for more affordable lens. And I'll have that video out here in a few days on the Tamron, what I thought, and you know, is it sharp? Is it how does it how does it focus? You know, I know with the R5 the Tamron didn't focus as well, not as fast as the Canons, because this is not written the algorithm is not written for the for the third party lenses. So anyway, guys, you get have a great day. Get out there and go shoot some pictures. Hopefully, if you're waiting on your camera, it comes soon. I was really surprised how many people hadn't gotten their cameras, but it looks like I'm starting to see people saying, hey, I got my camera, I got my camera, which is pretty nice. Um, get out there and go shoot. Um, again, let me know what you think. Ask questions, whatever you'd like to see. I've got a list from what you guys have asked me so far, and I'll get after that. And until then, you guys have a great day, and stay safe. Oh, before I forget, guys, I'm going to be doing the drawing for the picture this weekend coming for whoever won the picture. So everybody that's commented on any video within June, you're entered into that drawing for that moose picture. And uh, I'll let you guys know a little later when that's, you know, when I'm going to draw that. It's probably going to be on the first or the second. I'll probably do the drawing and compile all the pictures. Let's just random number generator, put everybody in an Excel sheet, assign everybody a number, see what number comes up and notify whoever got the picture. Until then, you guys, stay safe and uh, go get some good pictures. Take care.